Today, as you said, we are coming to you from the Maritani refugee settlement. One of the worst blazes has already forced more than 6,000 people from their homes. Refugee agencies are warning that millions of Ukrainians could be on the move to escape the fighting. Families who've lost their homes are sleeping on the roadside. At least 348 people died or went missing. A record 100 million people across the world have been forced to flee their homes. What do you feel like you've left behind or what do you miss the most about life there? Um, I miss my whole life. It's uh, not easy to leave the people that you love. réfugiés, parce que personne ne nous a obligés de rentrer dedans. Nous, on le fait de notre gré. Pour nous, quelqu'un qui a protégé les animaux, et en même temps, on est en train de créer une bonne voisinage entre nous et les autres. الحاجة جابنا هنا ده موية موية وكيد وصل في البلد بلد كرب ومار وعيد ما في معنا ناس يقول فوقه عشان كده جينا ولا غنم ولا جل ولا جدارة هسا بيجا سنتين سنة الفادية عملناه موية ما كتير سووا محلات ناس قارين يقول فوقه ما يال سنة ده موية جا كتير كل ما هل ده ده فنجا كل ده يا أم ويا زهر يا أم جمدة بو اللي بيواجهنا شديد ده يا هو جهود زهر أطب ده يعني لو يا أبوك ما هيد ما يتشوفه هاي ده يا واكل بتاعه ده ما لقي دول لا أم بنومه We're looking at communities. Struggling to resist the impact of climate change and extreme weather events. Uh, we need to advocate for development actors to provide support directly to the communities. They need heavy machinery. It's pumps, it's excavators, it's shovels. So if these dikes do fail, that they, they have a chance to resist the impact of climate change, much of which has got nothing to do with them. It's because of countries who have been unable to wean themselves off the carbon. Um, excesses, but the impacts are being held here where the most vulnerable people are doing the most in order to maintain their communities, maintain their livelihoods. Son básicamente las regiones que están más afectadas por el cambio climático, lógicamente, eso son las regiones tropicales. Aunque la temperatura está subiendo más en el Ártico, por ejemplo, y en el Mediterráneo que en otras partes de, del planeta. Eh, como las regiones tropicales son regiones de temperaturas más altas, cuando suben ahí las temperaturas hacen más daño. Entonces el calentamiento global donde está haciendo más daño es en las zonas tropicales, que es donde se están perdiendo cultivos, donde las sequías son más, más dañinas, donde las lluvias, los patrones de las lluvias han cambiado más. Ahora ya no llueve como antes. Este tipo de expresiones indican que han cambiado los patrones de las lluvias, entonces las lluvias ya no son idóneas para la agricultura. ¿no? Entonces, bueno, básicamente regiones tropicales, todo lo que es África subsahariana, sur de Asia, Centroamérica, Sudamérica, esas son las, las más afectadas. Pues plantear todo un conjunto de medidas, ¿no? Y básicamente se concentran en dos grupos, uno se llama mitigación y otro se llama adaptación. La mitigación es básicamente reducir las emisiones de gases de efecto invernadero. 
que son las que están provocando el calentamiento global de la atmósfera. Y la adaptación es hacer todo un conjunto de cosas para, en la medida de lo posible, adaptarnos a la, a la nueva, al nuevo clima, al, al, a un clima de temperaturas más altas. ¿no? Eso quiere decir cambiar cultivos, quiere decir mmm, tratar mejor el tema del agua, porque el calentamiento global está haciendo disminuir el agua potable disponible. Eh, son medidas que Naciones Unidas llama de adaptación, pero digamos que las más importantes son las de mitigación, es decir, reducir las emisiones de gases de efecto invernadero es la medida imprescindible para no irnos a un calentamiento global que sea desastroso para toda la humanidad. Es esta prise de conciencia que se desarrolla a nivel de la comunidad con respecto al cambio climático. Ils sont en train d'adopter de, des, des pratiques positives par rapport à, à tout ce qui a trait à, à la destruction de l'environnement. Hi everyone, my name is Marta Bernet. I'm the head of activities of and community service at the American School of Barcelona. Refuge Art is a movement. It's a movement started by students for refugees. Our purpose is to create awareness of the refugee cause and to raise money for uh, refugee camps around the world, specifically for educational programs uh, addressed to youth from 14 to 18 years old. Uh, Refuge Art started in 2016 and it was basically a, a, a movement and activity done in high school. Uh, throughout the years we saw the, the need and we really envisioned that Refuge Art had to be uh, experienced by all the students in the school. We have a, a group of, a main, a core group that's the 11th graders and we call it the executive committee. This group works together throughout the year. We meet once a week and we uh, work towards the event that happens normally in, in April, May. Um, the, this, this group organizes everything in Refuge Art and we have activities organized uh, with the younger kids. For example, we, this year we're doing mini lessons where all the students in elementary simultaneously receive uh, a presentation from the 11th graders about uh, refu refugees. It's inspiring to see how uh, students of different ages work together. Students that maybe they don't know each other, but Refuge Art is a connector. One of the objectives is to raise money and every year we're able to raise a, an important amount and this uh, money goes directly to the refugee camps and in the past we've been able to provide some of the camps with uh, books, with uh, school supplies, with uh, teachers that are helping in, in the camp. So through the donations we've been able to to create these initiatives in the camps. The first year was the life vests and we did art pieces using real life vests from refugees. And has this event allowed ASB students to expand their creativity, would you say? Yeah, I, I do believe. I do believe that they expand their creativity through, through, through this project for different reasons. Um, there's a links class that's uh, like in another classes is guided to study, but this is a class where they need to create pieces to sell the day of the event. 
these students who come to the link class are not students that are specifically interested in art. They come here to do things uh, for, for that event and to bring awareness to the whole community about the refugee crisis. And then they have to, to be creative, to invent what to do and to use different materials. On the other side, there are students that are, there are maybe in IB or maybe high school students that are creative and they want to participate. So yeah, they decide, okay, I want to do a painting or a sculpture or a poem or something. So I really think uh, it expands the creativity, yeah. I, I think the biggest uh, benefit for uh, refugees around the world that uh, Refuge Art has is it brings awareness to the issue. And I, again, I think in our daily lives, um, it's easy not to think about those issues, um, but um, it's impacting millions of people around the world. And so it, it brings it to the forefront for people in our community and uh, again I think people in our community have a certain amount of power uh, and ability to make change and so um, I think it's benefiting both our students as well as uh, uh, addressing this, issue, this worldwide issue.